Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Native Tater channel. Alright, I'm going to talk about Verizon Home Internet with this new cube and my first problems with it and my initial impressions here after using this for a little over a week now. And I've had several of Verizon Home Internet devices. I've had their older cube, which is the ASCII one. This is the ARC, uh, which I believe stands for Arcadian which is like the um, the brand that manufactures it. It looks identical to the previous one. I have a video talking about that. But on this one, the bottom on the SKUI, you'll see it starts with ARC, and then it has um, XCI55AX. When I first plugged it in, I had trouble with it activating. I did not have that same problem with ASCII. And then I'm going to talk about real quickly the comparison of this box versus the ASCII with them in the exact same location. You know, it should technically be the exact same thing. They are far from the same thing. Uh, vastly different performance here. So first off, let's talk about when I first plugged it in. You get a little white LED that flashes uh, in this upper corner. I had that with my old one. And then after it blinks for a few minutes, it actually boots up. And then I got a yellow LED, a steady yellow. And I knew from looking at the manual that that means it was a update. Now, the problem here is the literature they give you is not very informative. In fact, I don't even think the yellow light is mentioned in their little setup guide that they email you uh, or send you. But in the actual user manual PDF in there, it does talk about the yellow meaning it is a... Um, it can be a software update and these devices are typically shipped with you know kind of an older firmware and then when they connect they update the firmware uh, to the latest before they get going so on this one I had that yellow and it was kind of weird because it was showing me no internet connectivity and then eventually it um, it did ask for me to um, sign into the Wi-Fi network it didn't really do that until I opened up the my Verizon app on my phone while I was connected to it and the second I did that my phone said hey you need to sign into this and I don't think that was coincidence I think I had to either go to my computer and type in the 192.168.1.1 address which is the um, like the web GUI or the web interface for this device and then that kind of triggered it to like that, hey, wake up, I'm trying to connect to the internet here. And it said that um, it needed to confirm my uh, identity. So once I clicked OK or clicked accept on that button, it gave me a web page, which I'll throw up here. And it said, you know, thank you, your device activation is almost complete. And it tells you to complete it, you need to unplug and turn off your device, wait 10 seconds, and then plug it back in to power it up. Well, I did that and it didn't work. I had the same um, do loop over and over again. And just again, I had the yellow light on them, which I, was kind of weird to me that I had the yellow light, which I thought meant, hey, leave it alone, let it update. But then the app itself, when I was connecting to it, was telling me to uh, turn it off and restart it. So I did that about two or three times. And I said, all right, let me leave it. So I left it plugged in overnight with the yellow light on. And then the next morning, I did the same thing where I um, logged into it with a computer or my Verizon app. Uh, e either of them give you the same um, web page that tells you to like, click, you know, confirm that you are who you are and you're trying to um, activate this device. And after I did that, after it set overnight, it instantly kicked on and I got an email from Verizon that exact uh, minute that said, congratulations, you're... 5G home internet is set up. So I think others have had problems with activating. The trick I think for most people is two things. One is let it sit for hours, uh, especially if it has a yellow light on. Let it just do its thing. Some of it's also provisioning on Verizon side that they have to flip their switch to say this guy uh, is allowed to connect to the network. And sometimes that does not happen in time for when you actually get your box shipped to your house. You actually beat their process on the back end to actually activate this device so that's my tips for activating it now let's talk about the performance i connected um, directly to this one as well as my other gateway which is actually still plugged in and, and working as my main internet right now and i just went up there and tested and so on my ascii one 
I just ran a test and I got 310 megabits per second download and 24 megabits per second upload and those are honestly actually good numbers for me I'm typically more around um, 240 250 megabits per second down and 15 to 20 up and then my ping um, is 24 at idle it's 160 milliseconds for download and 523 milliseconds for upload my uploads always been worse uh, for the latency there but overall those were good numbers and so I immediately if you can look at the time uh, that was at 9:41 p.m. I go on 9:43, so I just disconnected my phone from the ASCII uh, using Wi-Fi on both of them, and then I connected to this Arc one, and the exact same spot. Here's a picture of where they are sitting uh, side by side. That T-Mobile one is actually turned off um, in this in this um, testing, and then you can see here I got 20 megabits per second down and 18 up with this guy sitting right beside the the um, unloaded ping is pretty similar uh, but you can see the upload ping is terrible there um, at 2.15 seconds um, that is horrendous and um, I haven't tested something like uh, video uh, conferencing or something but with that kind of lag going on that would not be a, a good um, experience even with um, that speed, which that that speed, that bandwidth is okay for for video conferencing, but it's the lag that will create uh, a poor experience. So, my first thing to figure out is why the heck is this thing so slow? You know, I logged into it. It does show you your 4G and 5G signals uh, metrics. It doesn't tell you what band you're on, and Verizon does have more than one 5G band, and there's good bands and there's you know worse bands, and I can't confirm what I'm on, but with these kind of speeds, I have to assume that I'm not on their C-band, which I know on the other one I must be because of the speeds. So um, this one does show that I'm connected on 4G and 5G, so it's not that it's not working there. But uh, for some reason, it is slow. Now, I did a little bit of um, internet searching there for other people. I did find other people, especially like on Reddit, that commented the same thing. They had an ASCII box, they got this box, and they were vastly slower with this box in the exact same location under seemingly the exact same uh, situation so i'm going to talk to verizon and see what i can kind of figure out do some more testing here the other big thing i need to do is take this guy apart because it has external antenna inputs and maybe the antennas built into this guy are just not as good as the other one and once i hook up an external antenna maybe i'll get blazing faster speed we'll find out or it could be the actual modem chipset in here is just not as good and there's something wrong there. The one thing I will say is this 20 megabits per second down is the slowest that I have tested but this was the fair and square you know, I wanted to do it at the same time because you do get a little bit of variation in speed on time of day but typically I was getting somewhere around 50 to 100 megabits per second so um, a little bit faster than what this um, side by side test showed but still nowhere close to where I typically am with the ASCII box. So that's a little bit disappointing. It's a little bit concerning to me uh, because I think mostly what they're shipping out nowadays is this one, and that doesn't bode well. So um, stay tuned for more videos, and we will find out how to get the speed up, if external antennas help, and if there's some other settings I can mess with to help improve this.